me? Okay. Uh, feel free to, to start. So I'll just say welcome everybody to uh, to the Morpheus Open House, and we're covering the responsive design with that uh, uh, incredible amount of of uh, work and really nice results. And uh, Uday from Marist College will be presenting primarily, and we'll be uh, looking to get your feedback and input as well. So anytime you're ready, Uday. Yep, just a second. It's uh, fitting now. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yep. Okay. So, yeah, I'll start with uh, walking through the actual application. Um, so this is the home page, uh, the gateway page, as we call it. And I um, just want to show you the responsiveness here. It's basically the same exact thing, but we actually decided recently to actually not to use the left navigations in the mobile menu or collapse completely uh, so that we can use the whole space uh, for the actual content. Um, and then the it is a button always to pop out with the left navigation for the tools. Uh, this is standard even after you log in. So if you log in as an admin in this scenario, uh, this, this thing stays there and then you have the tools always on the on that side basically. Uh, and this is the new one which we added. It's the, the right navigation which pulls out the sites. Uh, it's all sites basically the game site you are uh, in. Um, and when you go to the bigger screen, it just uses the space, whatever you have, to fill up all the sites. Um, and also the recent one, which we just did, is I just show you that uh, in the preferences, where you set the active sites. Oh, sorry, I think I'll use this uh, for that purpose. So probably I think I haven't updated my code repository, but. Uh, So we have eliminated the three-step uh, preferences. This is the old one, uh, so just to show you. Uh, this is the actual active sites which you want to show it in the top, and these are the remaining stuff which are active, and these are non-active sites which you don't want to show up in your uh, preferences. Uh, so we actually merged these two functionalities here because we don't want to go beyond one line of displaying the sites list. If you do that, it will be uh, not looking good. Like you expand the whole navigation bar to two lines or three lines, depending on the, the active sites you have. And you don't want that to happen because it doesn't look good at all. So what we did is rather just use the one line and then have an extra pop out navigation button so that you get this drawer when you, your page is overflowed. So in this scenario, there is no left navigation because you don't have more sites anymore. Hey, yeah, Uday, I'm just going to, sorry to interrupt, yeah. I'm just going to check. It looked like uh, um, at least one person, Becky, was not a, is not able to hear anything. Um, so I was just do, doing an audio check. Can everyone hear? Uh, okay. Everyone can hear? Okay, great. Sorry, Uday, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just want to make sure that folks were able to hear. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so whenever the sites overflow, it automatically shows up this way. Uh, so you get the all sites navigation button and then the same thing, but it gives you every site you are in, including the ones which you already have on the top. Um, so that's one major change which we did in the past few weeks. Um, another thing is the home, instead of making it my workspace as a full name, we thought it was much easier to have it as a home always. And also when you go to the mobile view, um, this just moves up because this part would be removed and just moved into here. Uh, but we always want this uh, home navigation easy because um, you know, if you go to a different site and if you want to come back to your home, it's always right here. So just click that and you are on your workspace, basically. And so, yeah, it's much easier now. The left navigation is the tools and the right navigation is the sites. Um, and you have the logout and 
the home here on the top along with your user preferences. Um, I can log in. And also, this is one thing which we added, um, the logout confirmation. This, um, I don't, we have still have to uh, see. I think it's useful in the scenario because um, uh, people have troubles clicking on the mobile screens because uh, the navigation is supposed to assume that we want to, user wants to navigate to a different site and he clicked here. But instead of this, he might have clicked here because of a fat finger. So it could be quite possible he's, he wants this click, but he did here. And he doesn't want to immediately log out because sometimes it does happen in the mobile screen. So um, we added this small thing, which just confirms the, the thing, you, do you really want to log out? If you say, okay, that is best. Um, and we're still thinking of to decide on what if we should use it only in mobile screens or if we should use it in the whole application, no matter what in a mobile view or in a desktop view. Uh, that's still under uh, this thing. It's not confirmed what we should be doing. Um, and this change is not yet made to the track, so this is still under work uh, under focus. So um, uh, I will log in as a normal user. Um, let's show you. User screen. Um, so the user, since he has a profile, he, he, that profile picture will show up here, and the instead of the full name, uh, because administrator does not have the profile, um, he profile to load it for him. Um, the rest is the same. Um, he gets this uh, navigation tool, and then he goes to the bigger screen. He gets the name and everything, and he can go do the actual stuff, whatever he wants, and. Uh, that pretty much uh, is the recent changes we did, um, and uh, most of the functionality is uh, done as far as the response to design for the overall portal. It, uh, overall portal, sorry. Um, but we we have some some small issues with the tool itself. Um, I can show you. Uh, uh, if you go to let's assume if you go to my um, I think if you go to work site, I think this is okay. Yeah, beyond a particular point, you see this, this is getting double scrolled. So most of the tables are the, the only things which have a table, the tool has a table views. Uh, they are a little bit problematic if you go to smaller screens, like very smaller screens. Um, I think the tablet view is fine, but the, the small mobile views would be a little bit tough to actually deal with this large content in a small mobile screen. Um, that way still uh, has to be done. Uh, beyond that, the overall uh, portal response design is pretty much stable. Uh, um, I think so, that's pretty much uh, it. And yeah, go ahead. I was going to say that might be. I'm just curious if everyone, if that made sense to everybody, or if anyone had any questions or clarifications uh, on this. And I think I think Uday wasn't there also this piece. I'm not sure if it's in your version of the QA server with the the mashing up of the uh, new dashboard tool, um, the what was called the Mike Workspace tool. Um, let me see here. Let me test. No, I think so. Oh, you mean changing the dashboard to my workspace? Yeah. Tool. Was it? Okay. Right, there was like a mashup, or it was the dashboard plus the, right, with the recent activity assignments and events plus the um the the synoptic views uh for the other tools i believe that was something we were either going to do or was our maybe already in trunk or that chuck severance is working on oh okay uh, yeah i think this is a trunk uh, as of today morning uh, so, okay so, yeah yeah wilmo writes dashboard plus home in, in my workspace so yeah that was in their change okay. so again just okay. curious for folks especially folks who are new to this and may not have seen it before um, did that all make sense to you? Do you have any questions, comments? Dee says she confirms the likes the confirm layout for the fat fingering. I 
I can also say, speak, we had a lot of discussion around how to handle the My Sites display. There was a lot of discussion around that, right? Because the current version of Sakai, you kind of specify how many sites go into your top view, um, which UJ, UJ showed earlier. Now it's more of an automatic expansion based on um, how, you know, how much screen space you have. So that it's going to change that whole preferences area. Right, right now it's more screen space specific in the in the new version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The main thing is and the, Chuck S wrote he has made no progress. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, and just adding the point to that. Uh, just so that the point there is basically to make it more uh, consistent uh, UI, uh, so that uh, no matter what screen you have, it's always consistent, and no matter your settings, you don't spoil your uh, UI look and feel. The other, some of the other discussions we had around it were things like, um, you know, what to show on the right when you have a, a more sites available. Um, do we show a number there? Do we show a Chevron? We, um, the decision was ultimately just to show a Chevron, so it's like it fills up which sites. And I believe, I forget if we've gotten to the point, Uday, of being able to specify which sites are in the order so that, the, like, if you have a, the most important sites up at the top, they'll be the ones that show first. And can you remind yeah. me of, of what that was? That still is controlled by the, the actual order you pref you have it in your preferences. Like uh, basically, you set your order in your preferences, and that's the order it picks up. Cool. So this is the order, and that's the order it's shown here. Yeah. So the order is the same. Yeah. Uh, Davey asks, how does that work? Most important site sequence and preferences, and I believe what you were just saying is sequence and preferences, right? Yeah, yeah. This is this is exactly what it follows here. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Dr. Chuck says there are only two columns now in, in the preferences, so they've been reduced. So it's basically, you know, all the sites that you want to see and the sites that you currently really don't want to see. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think what are some of the other discussions that, that kind of came up. Oh, another one discussion was when going to the mobile view, um, that uh, whether to show the icons or not or just make them in that pop down. and. Uh, that was, there was a lot of discussion on that, at that when you're in that mobile view, you might not really remember what those icons mean. Mm -hmm. So to make them completely disappear to give you more real estate and then have them appear with the text um, in that, uh, uh, I don't know, we call that a right chevron or whatever. And I see, let's see, a couple more comments in chat. Uh, it would be great to navigate around all tools using small device, i.e. iPhone, and create Jiris for those tools that have problems with responsive design. Yeah, that's a great idea, yeah. Mariano. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And Chuck uh, Severin says we need to come up with a document telling how to alter mar uh, tool markup to be responsive. Yes, that also has it. I think the dashboard tool uh, is using the specific bootstrap markup, I think, uh, but I'm not quite sure. Uh, but yeah, uh, we should come up with a markup, definitely. And I'm repeating stuff from the chat because it's uh, on the – make sure it gets in the recording. So um, there's some kudos to the idea for uh, getting around navigating all the tools uh, that Mariano had. And then uh, Chuck Severin says, I think that making tool mark – Yes. <clears throat> yes, I think I got lost. Oh yeah, you're back. My, my audio got lost for a second. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah. So making, uh, yeah. So we need really clear specs because um, it can involve a lot of people in, involved in the in the work. So. So it's it may. Uh, so anyway, I think it looks really great and. Um, I'm just curious what other people. It sounds like so far the the feedback's positive or open. You know, any kind of uh, feedback or suggestions or questions. You know, we kind of flew through that pretty quickly.
So Uday, do you have any other any other thoughts on what the next steps are? Yeah, uh, as Mariano said, I think the next step would be probably the, the tools, attacking the tools uh, specific thing, and basically coming out with the markup for the tools so that follow, everyone follows the standard, uh, and we can make it as a uh, guide so that we can um, make everything consistent around the Sakai. This is good for all the tools. Um, uh, I think yeah. At least for now, we, uh, uh, yeah, we can go parallel for those two things. Like, if we can identify the tools which have a problem and also come up with respect at the same time, we can uh, once we have the final conclusion for these two, the final list of the tools which had problems, we can just start attacking everything. From a QA uh, perspective, how are we going to have to to manage it things? Are we going to have to test, I guess, get people to test on, on the smaller device or just maybe shrink their screen like you're doing and test in two different modes, do you anticipate? Or will we be able to just focus primarily on testing the functionality of tools and it should be fine, uh, you know, yeah. with smaller screens? Or Yeah, I, I'm, I actually prefer actual dividers, but I think uh, uh, Chrome has a functionality where you, uh, if you would click on F2 all and you can choose your models, like which phone you want, to, which device you want to view it as, if you say iPhone 4, uh, that brings to the, the phone resolution, and, the, and it'll let you know that if your application would look like this in iPhone 4. So is that, is that Chromebook? Which browser is that? This is Chrome. Uh, Chrome. Chrome has okay, it. and what's the... Yeah, it's, it's, the... it has its... Uh, if you just click on F12, uh, it will automatically bring you to this. Uh, well, okay. I've got an F12 sure. on my Mac, so that should work great. Right. So it has a whole list of things. Uh, I'm not quite sure how uh, accurately it will be possible because, um, because of the browser uh, engines they use in the back end, but uh, because actual iPhones use uh, Safari uh, thing. So I don't know how much it would actually this comes similar to the actual engine. Uh, at least the, the screen resolutions are at least perfect in this scenario. So. Yeah, uh, and also yeah, in the GR we have Morpheus tag, uh, so we anything related to the, these things can always be added in the Jira with. Uh, Morpheus tag for that. Right, that's a good that's a good reminder. So I'll put that in the uh, chat here. Um, the uh, there's a label for those of us who use, uh, and of course, if you get involved in the QA, you'll also be helping use uh, Jira to report issues. And there's a field called uh, labels, and um, under the field called labels, what we're using is just uh, a tag Morpheus all lowercase, and it is case sensitive. Oh, good, thanks for bringing that up to show it. And so if you just tag your ticket with Morpheus that's related to, um, you know, to the change in screen size or looks that might be related to responsive design issues, that'd be really, really helpful. Because then we have a, a filter that developers can look at and, and kind of go through those issues. It's not under components, actually. Yeah. It's a little further down. Yeah, it's where labels are. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Oh. Well, thanks, Sude. That was really, really good. Yeah, just uh, keep open for any questions. <clears throat> thanks, Didi. Thank you on behalf of uh, Uday and the team. And it was also UX testing, so thanks, Wilma, for that. And uh, yeah, that was also really cool that Wilma and Louisa were taking some of the suggestions that we were getting earlier on. and 
getting some feedback on on those ideas so we can you know narrow down to practical um, what's what's practical versus theoretical yes that was re really helpful Wait. What's that? So uh, thanks, Mariano, uh, and uh, for kudos to Uday and, fo and Chuck and other folks for great teamwork, and I think Edu uh, Eduardo Rey also. Um, and there were several other people. And um, Chuck Severance writes, one thing I think we need to do is have a, con have a constant to find the best skin. Oh, a contest to find the best skin. Oh, so I think uh, you mean like the, the colors and the color schemes, things like that? Focus on pretty. What do you mean, uh, Dave, uh, by let others focus on pretty? Oh, well, the engineers do the real work. <laughs> right. Yeah, there are actually a lot of things we can go on. And also the uh, color theories, and uh, um, and also they have to support the actual uh, accessibility. And yeah, it, it keeps going. <laughs> so. Uh, but again, it, the Morpheus is very, pretty simple to actually make any changes, those kind of things. So, yeah. so Dave says it'll be interesting to see how this folds into our own instance. And a couple of echoes of people saying, yeah, definitely. Uh, making sure it looks really pretty is important, um, and also consider accessibility issues. Bye, bye, uh, Dr. Chuck. Thanks for uh, thanks for dropping in. And Dave, um, want to see this? What does that mean? Well, the, oh, the accessibility group want to see it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, definitely giving them a, a heads up on that. Thanks, Wilma. Any other questions or comments or suggestions? Let's say I see one from DD. We could have the Morpheus skin vote at the Sakai virtual conference. That's the really cool idea. I guess in order to have a skin vote, we'd have to then, Didi, I guess, figure out um, how we get people to, um, you know, to submit skins. Like um, Uday, if we had people submit skins just as like um, uh, screenshots or PowerPoints or something, like the, the thing static just to show the concept, would that be sufficient? For a you know for a developer to then take that and put that into the the uh, skin or what what would you need? I think color codes uh, is the actual preferred way. Uh, the color codes um, uh, like a primary color and uh, the secondary color and the text color, the background color. So um, in the technical terms, they call it as a style guide basically. Um, so they uh, submit like um, if they do a screenshots, so people can like, kind of visualize that they'd also want to have the color codes on there uh, as hex well. Hex RGB, yeah, uh, hex or RGB both work, but hex is the normal uh, static used in the CSS. But yeah, okay. is, the, is there color values? Yeah, hex or RGB? Yeah, both work. Yeah. Is there is there a way to like? Like let folks, is there a way to like list out this of what the different elements are that have different colors and kind of what they are now? And that way, you know, uh, folks might be keyed into thinking about, oh, for that element, I 
want to use this color and for this other element I want to use some other color. That my question does not make any sense, or? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, can I repeat the question? Yeah, I had a question. And I'm noticing before I go to that um, again, uh, Dave um, says specific page for screenshot that would help colors also change with behavior. I'm not sure I understand um, what that means. Yeah, I don't know. Looking at this. Um, I can specify easily like uh, simple things like the major things are the primary and the secondary colors. So if I'm talking about primary and secondary colors, the primary is basically the one which you majorly see here, like the dark contrast, which is the, the header for the site and the header for the tools. Um, and the button colors, uh, those are the primary colors. And the secondary would be like uh, the non, the second essential, like the backgrounds of the sites background for the tools, uh, background for the tool header or the tool uh, navigation, um, and the actual background for the website, obviously. Uh, uh, these are the actual different colors. And mostly, we will be having some contrast. If you look at the buttons, those are contrasts of the actual blue color here. Uh, so those have some almost similar uh, contrast to that. So. Yeah, if you come up with some two or three colors as the prim primary colors, you think it would be the better option, uh, then we can um, say, okay, you apply this here and see how it looks, and you apply this here and see how it looks. Uh, that's how it's basically uh, done in the designing of this UI. So I see Sean writes, we need a system style guide for that, Neil, because my question was, is there a way that what you were just actually answering, was there a way of identifying which elements you know, need colors defined, and it sounds like there might be a way to do that pretty simply by focusing on the foreground colors, um, right? And then uh, uh, Dave is suggesting keep the color suggestions uh, specific, uh, keep the suggestions specific. So he says if we can specify which parts are up for change in the contest, we can focus just on those those colors and, and you know, so people know what to focus on. Um, mm -hmm. That sounds like a fun idea. Uh, are you up for that, Uday? Yeah, yeah. I don't think you'd have to, you wouldn't have to do a lot of work. I think we could, you know, we can get like some other folks to actually kind of run the contest, so to speak. But maybe just get your guidance in terms of how we word it, and what kind of mm -hmm. you know feedback specifically we ask people from for. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Good to find. Yeah. Cool. And then we need to figure out like what we give away to the winner. Like, do we give them a little Sakaiger doll or <laughs> or what? Yeah, actually, um, I don't know if I can pull up the. Um... What's that? I just want to pull up the Sakai doc. I mean, Marcus documentation from Sakai um, okay. GitHub. Okay. Yeah, but it has some basic steps like how to um, change your theme, um, um, basically using your existing. Uh, So I would say this is the only um, what is that? So the default stock CSS is basically the only file you basically touch to change the colors. And everything, the colors are basically here. These are the only colors you want to change or you may be changing. Um, so you're looking at so, GitHub? Yeah. yeah. Under the Sakai project, I presume? Yep. This is exactly the file you have all the colors for this Morpheus uh, UI. Um, and this is where you basically change these colors. Beyond this page, there is there we don't have any colors codes in the whole uh, Morpheus. This is the place where it actually picks the actual values, the color values. So you can do everything. Are you showing this on your screen, or are you? Did you, I didn't see if you pasted a link or what to the I, I, to the specific uh, file? 
Uh, if anyone wants to play, uh, the uh, try the changing the colors and uh, changing the default themes. This is basically the documentation. Of the, uh, this is the place where they actually change those uh, values. Right, I'm trying to figure to out how it looks. Oh, I see. You got the link in there. Cool. Okay. So GitHub. Uh, dot com Sakai project Sakai blah master reference library source Morpheus master okay so uh, cool. this is your uh, uh, there is one more documentation where you can see uh, how to compile the skin so yeah. The uh, question is, is there a way to modify the look via the code page and apply it to see what it looks like without having to, as a Sakai instance to apply this to? Hmm. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, all right. Right. It sounds like uh, that's what we'll need to figure out some of those details, Dave, uh, maybe yeah. offline and, you know, and keep it simple for people and keep it simple for Uday. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you can go see and just to try it out, you can just take the home page, like the, the actual dashboard. And then see apply your skin and uh, change the colors and then see how it looks and send it over and then we can uh, yeah see everyone to see yeah. so yeah we can just pick one page and see we can review beyond that. Okay, well uh, I don't know. It feels to me like maybe we're we're uh, wrapping up or uh, but if there's other. Oh, I see that uh, one hope posted a link to uh, yeah, the a place compiling to skin, yeah. skin, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one hope has also been I think really helpful in this process. Uh, guide to create a custom skin. So yeah, a whole bunch of people working behind the scenes. Okay. So are there any other any other things we need to talk about to to uh, kind of wrap up for today? Um, or feedback um, that uh, yeah. yeah thanks Matt on behalf of all the people who are actually doing the work what are you saying you day that we're pretty much pretty much wrapping up yeah um, pretty much looks like the yeah I mean um, yeah, we can figure out the, uh, the next steps uh, in the next coming meetings and see how we close. But uh, if you don't yeah. have any major uh, things for now, just yeah, we can start that. Yeah, and so I, what I would suggest to folks is you have the link in the um, chat. If you need the link, email us to the uh, QA server and feel free to like take it and play around with it. And then if you have, uh, if there's things that you find that are confusing or that you have questions or suggestions, um, feel free to. Uh, to email, I mean, Uday, who do you think they should just email you directly or me or to the list? What do you think the best way for people to provide feedback is? I think list is a better option uh, because since we're almost uh, putting it in the open now, so that's the way we think. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, ideally, I guess, suppose, yeah, if you have feedback, ideally post a list. If you're not comfortable with that, then uh, send it to me. And I'll forward it on to the team to look at, but because uh, I know that some people, this may be your first uh, view at this, and you may want some time to, to you know, offline uh, play with it a bit and see how it behaves on mobile devices and and that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't mind sending it yeah. to me, but I, I normally think it's better to have like if, if it's kind of a feedback, everyone's uh, it's making it as a discussion would actually help. So. Yeah, I, I agree. Just not that everyone may be a member of the Sakai Dev list and. Oh, yeah. Because uh, yeah, I yeah. assume that's for me, right? So, yeah. So, they can, we can send it on for them. And uh, thanks, Didi. And so, yeah, in terms, Davey, about the contest, yeah, we'll figure out the details and then send out to the list once we figure those out. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Dave.
All right. Well, thanks, Uday. Uh, appreciate it very much and all the hard work that you've done. And and uh, like I said, I think there's several others, right? Juan, who's done work on this, and Eduardo Ray and Chuck Severance, and um, that cover most of the people that have been involved with the technical stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, Steph, yeah. Yeah. And Mariano. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Appreciate you attending, and uh, and we'll keep you posted as we make uh, more progress and constantly uh, looking for input. Yep. Take care. Thank you. Yep. Thanks.